So today we're going to make a jiggy craw. That's what I'm calling this. It's a, a jig style crayfish pattern using my creature bodies. So we'll get right to it here. I'm using a 4-0 Attitude streamer hook from Partridge. And what I'm going to do is turn this into a jig hook. So I'm going to take a pair of pliers and I'm going to bend the eye up towards the hook point at about a 45 degree angle, give or take. Doesn't have to be exact. Just like this. One bend in the metal is not going to make that much of a difference as far as strength in the hook goes. So we're going to get that in the hook now, or in the vise I mean. I'm going to be using 210 denier flat wax nylon and I'm just going to build a little thread base up right on that bend and we're going to create a little thread bump. We're going to be using large lead dumbbell eyes. I'm using the three inch, the large crayfish body on this fly. It's a great fly for largemouth bass. It's great for smallmouth, pike. It is a very heavy fly. The idea is to get it down quick, keep it down, and be able to bounce it along the bottom. The rubber legs at the end of it really, really come to life in the water. I mean, we all have seen the success of tournament bass, uh, bass fishermen that utilize jigs and things like that. So there's no reason as fly anglers that we can't do similar anyway. We can't match it exactly. But we can come pretty close. So I'm going to bring my thread all the way back now. And I'm going to start winding it up the bend of the hook about halfway. And now what I'm going to do is create another thread bump. And what that's going to do is when we put the crayfish body on, it's going to give it a stopping point so that it doesn't slide down the hook any further. We're going to bring this back down to the eyes. Now since this does ride hook point up, we're going to do a couple of different things here. Like I said, it is a heavy fly. So I'm going to use 0.03 non-lead wire. And I'm going to do a length of this all the way to where the hook just starts to bend straight down. And then I'm going to fold it over and do it again. So you can get a look. It's just two rows of the 0.03. And now I'm going to take and wind the rest of this down. And I should get about six wraps or so. Now as far as heaviness goes, you can make it as heavy or as light as you want. I do like these flies to be pretty heavy. I like them to get down. Alright, I'm going to bring my thread back. And now what we're going to use is a little four millimeter glass rattle and again I'm going to put this on the underside of the hook and I'm just going to wrap that in. Crayfish do make a noise when they're scurrying away so these glass rattles really do add some life and some excitement to the fly underwater. Now I'm going to utilize epoxy mono eyes. These are from Hairline. You can see them here. These are the black. Crayfish eyes are black. I'm going to put these in loosely. I'm not going to tighten down real heavy on the mono. That way down the road, once we finalize the fly, we can readjust these by sliding them out and then gluing them into place. So I'm going to leave a little bit of that extra length and then we'll just trim off the, the extreme excess. We're going to wind that up. Now we're going to use 
This is an EP brush. This is the tarantula brush. This is the one inch wide. It's got lots of little rubber legs, lots of craziness going on in here. You can use any color you want. This is an olive brown mix. I'm just going to tie the tag end in, tag end in, excuse me. And now what we're going to do is take a piece of medium round ultra wire. Just going to break that off. About halfway back down the fly, I'm just going to tie a length of this in and we're going to be able to adjust that a little bit afterwards. But I'm just going to get it ready. All right, we'll just rest the thread there for now. So now we're going to wind the dubbing brush on. And it doesn't have to be super, super dense. I mean, again, you're going to try to build up some underbody, but you can use a lot, uh, a lot very quickly on these brushes and they are, you know, they're not, they're not cheap. So I'm going to make sure my glass rattle is nice and covered up. We'll just move that wire out of the way. And then we'll wind the rest of our body up. I use about one of these brushes per fly. We're going to tie that off now. Just going to grab a different pair of scissors to trim the wire on the brush. All right, so right now we've got this big fluffy mess. I'm just gonna use my pick and brush and I'm just gonna kind of brush some of that out. Make sure I didn't catch too many of the rubber legs under anything. Perfect. So now I've already colored in my body and on this particular body, I'm using um, some fabric dyes as opposed to marker. Sharpies work great though. So I'm just going to line this up so that the tail of my crayfish body matches with the bend of that hook that we made. The eye or the point of this hook is going to go right through the center of this crayfish body right behind the antenna. I'm just going to poke this through and we can bring that right down to our little thread bump and we can stop it there. Put this back in the vise. Just make sure that lines up nice. And my wire is perfect where it is. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna work the wire up through all the brush material right behind that last set of legs. And then I'm gonna start wiring this in. And the wire is the only thing really that holds this body down. It's pretty much all you need. It will never move, it will never come off of this. The only thing I try to do is really keep the body from kinking and folding over on itself when I'm doing this. Sometimes it's easier said than done, but... So I put this wire on each segment of the Ultra Suede body. Um, when you see these things out of the package, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, I'm at my last little indent on the Ultra Suede. So what we're going to do now, if I was going to leave this just as a crayfish fly, plain and simple, without all the rubber legs, I would stop right now and just be done, tie that off, trim it up, and we're square. But since we're going to be adding all these rubber legs, what I'm going to do is tie my wire off back here. And we'll helicopter that off. Now what I'm going to do is cut this excess tail off. We're not going to need it. I'm just going to take my thread and I'm going to smooth that all out and make sure that it's really good and secure. And then I'm gonna build a taper 
all the way back to the eye of the hook and just kind of smooth out all the excess fibers and anything else that's kind of hanging out there. Perfect. So you can see at this point, we have a crayfish with no tail. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to use fly enhancer legs. And I'm going to use 12 sets on the top and 12 sets on the bottom. And this is going to create our rubber jig skirt. So I'm going to grab the whole clump of 12 right at once. And I'm going to fold it in half over top of my thread and I'm gonna roll it over that hook and what that does is it's gonna spread those legs out all the way around the top side of that hook for me now we're just gonna flip this over and I'm gonna use some lighter colored legs on the bottom and we're gonna do the same exact thing And you can use as many or as little legs as you want. You change the color. Um, I usually do lighter colored legs on the bottom than the top. Now it's important when you're doing this to keep your thread dead center and don't catch your legs. You want to keep one solid line of thread all the way through all of the legs top and bottom so now what I'm going to do is just flip these up and almost like a hollow fly now I'm going to create a wall of thread behind or I guess it would be in front I don't know depending on how you want to look at it on the other side of these rubber legs and what that's going to help to do it's because we've got so much stuff going on here, it's gonna help push those legs forward, but not enough that you lose any motion from the legs. The idea is to try to keep them from fouling around your line as much as possible. And still maximize the motion out of them. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we're just gonna tie this off. Clip off our tag. And now I'm just going to cut free all the ends of those rubber legs. I leave the, the little connections on there while I'm working with the legs. It's a lot easier to handle all of them that way. Otherwise, you're going to have 24 rubber legs flopping all over the place every time you try to make a wrap of thread. All right, that looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to flip this fly over and I'm going to take my brush one more time and I'm just going to really brush all those fibers out as much as I can and then we're going to trim them to shape. I like to leave them a little bit longer towards the front of the fly but I definitely shorten them up and taper the body in on the tail section. One little extra thing that you can do is if, when this is done, you can just pick that material up just a little bit and drop a little dab of super glue right where those thread wraps are. And then bring your body back down onto it. And then that'll just help secure it. The same thing with the eyes. If you want to make sure that they stay perfectly still, Take a little dab of super glue and just glue them in place on the ultra suede. Now, 